Electrolysis is a chemical process that works by putting electricity through a solution to form a compound of interest. A membrane cell is a form of electrolysis where the liquid is separated into two separate containers and joined together with a membrane. They are useful for a variety of things and are the basis for many fuel cells. In this video, I'll be using one to convert regular baking soda into highly corrosive sodium hydroxide. They can be made from almost anything and are ideal for home experimentation. A membrane cell always has a few of the same basic parts. First, you need two containers to hold the different liquids. Then you need to connect the containers with a bit of large diameter tubing. This tubing will hold the membrane later. I used some scrap acrylic I had lying around, but if you don't have any, be creative since anything watertight and not metal will work. I secured mine together with JB Weld. You can try Han Clue, but it's a nightmare to get it to stay sealed. The next thing you'll need are electrodes. You have a few options here, but some are better than others. In my final cell, I used graphite rods I ordered online for a few bucks. And they work pretty well, and they actually hold up, e even in the corrosive liquid. If you don't want to order stuff online and have an old lantern battery lying around, you can salvage the carbon rods from it. To do this, pry it open to reveal the four individual battery cells. Pull them out and clip them apart. Then use a pair of pliers, first twist off the metal cap. If it's stuck on, that's fine, mine just basically fell off so I chose to remove them. Once that's done, gently pull and twist back and forth on the carbon rods until it comes out. You'll need to thoroughly clean it as it's covered in manganese dioxide and potassium hydroxide. Finally, you'll need the membrane itself. Again, you have lots of options. I tried agar, vegetable gelatin, and carboxymethylcellulose, and they all worked well. So use whatever you can find. You can get them online or at health food or specialty stores. The procedure to make the membrane is always the same, regardless of which gel you're going to use. Mix them at a ratio of 1.5 grams of your gel material for every 100 mils of water. Then either heat it on the stove or in a microwave so that it dissolves. It works the same way as jello. Speaking of which, no, you can't use jello or gelatin. They degrade very quickly and are basically useless. Once you've got your hot gel solution, mix in either baking soda or salt. The salt will lead to a little bit of chlorine coming off the cell, but it's pretty minor. You'll only need to add enough to make the gel more conductive at the beginning. I used a piece of metallic tape to cover one end of the tube, and then I turned the cell on its side. Let the solution cool until it's a minute or two from going solid, but is still runny. Quickly fill the tube and then allow it to cool completely and harden. Now that the gel is in place, begin filling both sides of the cell alternating between each, as to not put too much pressure on the gel and make it pop out. Be sure to use distilled water for this. Once you're about halfway, you can remove the tape. In the left chamber, add a scoop or two of baking soda and stir it until it's completely dissolved. Ideally, you would put a small amount of sodium hydroxide in the right chamber to make it more conductive, but this doesn't really matter. After a few minutes of hydroxide forming, the conductivity increases significantly and the bubbling will increase as well. To power the cell, we're going to use several batteries wired in series. I, in this case, I used four smaller lantern batteries and one larger one. Connect the electrodes and put the positive in the baking soda side and the negative in the distilled water side. At the start, you'll see the baking soda is slightly alkaline and the water is neutral. After only an hour or two of running, the pH in the distilled water side had dropped significantly. After a day, it was so basic, it was literally off the scale of my pH paper, so probably around 14. To test it, a few hours in, I took a sample and added it to some copper sulfate solution. At this point, it wasn't as concentrated, but after a minute or two, a precipitate of copper hydroxide started to form. I took another sample at the end of the run and added some aluminum foil to it. Almost immediately, small bubbles started forming, and after a few minutes, the aluminum oxide layer had been eaten through and the bubbling picked up. After 10 minutes, the aluminum had actually started to darken. If you wanted to improve this or make it more concentrated, you would have to boil off the water. But if you're going to do this, do it in a steel container since it would eat through the glass. I did this to demonstrate the process, so I'm not going to take the time to do this step. You can also use the solution as is, or leave the cell running longer if you want it more concentrated. However, if you do concentrate it further, the agar will start to shrink and the gel gets messed up at the incredibly high pH, so you're going to want to stop before it's destroyed and the two chambers of liquid mix. So what is actually happening? Well, at both electrodes, molecules are being broken apart. At the positive side, the baking soda is being broken down into sodium ions and releasing carbon dioxide gas. At the negative side, water is being split into hydrogen and hydroxide ions. 
The flow of current through the membrane also makes it so that the positive sodium ions are drawn through the gel towards the negative electrode. As the sodium ions enter the right chamber, they mix with the hydroxide ions to form sodium hydroxide. I forgot to film it, but as the cell runs, the left chamber actually goes down in pH to almost neutral. I had to top that side up with baking soda about halfway through. Something I should note, this process will work with other sodium compounds. You can use sodium carbonate or sodium chloride. However, if you do this, different gases will be produced. With sodium carbonate, it's still carbon dioxide, but with sodium chloride, you're going to be producing chlorine gas. In this kind of cell, that isn't a problem because if you can deal with the chlorine, your sodium hydroxide is still separate from the chlorine. However, if you do it in a single cell, you're going to react some of the chlorine with your newly formed sodium hydroxide, so you're going to get sodium hypochlorite, which is bleach and is very difficult to separate out. As I mentioned earlier, this cell design is identical to those used in fuel cells, so in future videos I'll be using them to make various biological fuel cells. Okay guys, that's all I've got for this video. I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to subscribe, rate, and leave a comment. If you're interested in behind the scenes and extra content, the Facebook page is the place for that. If you're interested in my research and some of the things that I make and sell, like hats that make you study faster and nanoparticles, my website is the place for that. And if you're interested in seeing what I do on a day-to-day -day basis and it can get pretty crazy, Instagram is the place for that. All links in the description and I'll see you next time.